Hi, we're here at the ID Tech X show. I'm here with Stan Farnsworth from Novacentric. Stan, thanks for coming. What's new this year? Hi, Raghu. Thanks for letting us uh, uh, participate again. We have a great time every year. Um, so we're bringing some tried and true favorites uh, to the show this year. Great. Um, and we'll start off with our PulseForge photonic carrying tools. This is our PulseForge 1300. It uses flash lamps and a photonic carrying process to heat the surface of the materials, but not the volume of the materials. So we can create temperature gradients of several hundred degrees across a few tens of microns of right. substrate. Uh, this, uh, this kind of tool is used primarily for R&D and uh, uh, for applications ranging from consumer electronics, uh, wearables, photovoltaics. Uh, automotive is actually an emerging topic right. for us uh, over the last couple of years. And how is this distinguished from your competitors who do a similar thing? What makes sure. this different? Sure, so, so I tell people we're not the first ones to use flash lamps or lamps to process materials. Mm. Uh, hamburger restaurants use lamps to heat french fries. Right. right? <laughs> lamps aren't necessarily new technology. Heating with lamps is not necessarily new technology. This is new technology because of how we're being able to carefully control uh, the lamp pulse conditions, so we can really carefully tune what the thermal response right. of the materials right. is. Uh, we do a couple of other things that are very special. Uh, on board, on the side over here, we have onboard instrumentation. So from an academic uh, and scientific perspective, our customers can plug in the instrumentation to their samples and do real quantitative work right. uh, around the materials. We're also showing again this year the uh, EX1 uh, stage attachment, which is, uh, it's got a vacuum chuck, so we can get good right. thermal contact with the samples. We can create a vacuum inside with this cover glass, and we can also control the base temperature right. of the substrate. And this is all part of expanding the processing right. envelope for the, the variety of, of materials. And how quickly does it take your customers to get up and running with this, with, you know, through the learning curve? Is it a intense, difficult process, or how do you help them with that? Well, and that's a great question because that's another key differentiator with uh, the PulseForge tools from Novacentrix, where they're designed to be able to plug in easily, mm. uh, facilitize very easily. The tools come built in with software, uh, which is useful for being able to control the, right. the pulse conditions, as well as there's an onboard simulation that lets us uh, that lets our customers build a material stack and understand what the thermal response of the materials uh, is. Oh, and so when we install a tool, we include training for how to use the tool, as well as the normal safety training. Uh, the safety features in this are uh, priority number one, the interlocks, the self-diagnostics. Uh, that's another uh, differentiation with our competitors. Uh, and when uh, your so customers use different materials, how do they know, you know what settings to use? Is there some sort of library they can access? Or sure. Is it part so, of their development? so for the simulation, mm. there is a library of materials right. that comes with the tool right. with the thermophysical values. Right. Our engineering team will still stay involved with the right. customer and continue to help them get uh, right. uh, the successful process conditions. We don't just ship it and, and abandon them. Right. We'll, uh, we'll install it and we'll support them through the process development right. because we need them to be successful. That's how we know we're successful right. yeah. when they're successful. So this yeah. is a standalone tool. Right. Uh, when we think about integrating this into a roll-to-roll -roll yeah. feature, that's really a, a big topic for our customers now as well. So this is a unit uh, it still has a PulseForge tool. This particular flavor is a 1200. This is really optimized for processing metals on, on polymers and paper, metal inks. Uh, uh, we work with Adfos as a, a near-infrared dryer for helping to dry the inks prior to being processed with the tools. Uh, and we include an ink module on this particular tool. Right. If we can get in and see the, the particular pattern on here, we've printed an RFID antenna pattern. Uh, prior to the show, and we were running this sample of roll through here and getting good conductive results after drying and then uh, processing with the, the photonic carrying tool. So during the course of the show, Ragu, we've been running demos of actually turning on the machine and, and giving demos right. for, for, the, for the process. So there's many organizations using this, you know, in development. Um, what industries are currently using this, or do you think very close to using this in the actual commercial production of parts? Sure, so that's actually that's a great segue because what we're featuring uh, this year is really an applications focus. So we've got a, some key value propositions for the tools, also for our electrically conductive inks, 
our Metalon brand inks. Uh, but these are all areas where we're in production or we think soon to be in production uh, with our customers. We've had several notable uh, production implementations over the last couple of years. We have production factory tools running in facilities in China and Korea and Japan right nice. now, making right. things that people right. probably have in their pockets or in their homes or maybe right. in their cars as well, which is very exciting. Fantastic. Um, and one of, the, one of the themes that we're really bringing the, to the show this year uh, that's important for us is the concept of merging design with function. And this is the topic that is part of the value proposition of printed and flexible electronics. Right. And it's a topic that relates, uh, uh, you know, we, we, we tend to think about, as technologists, we tend to think about performance numbers, but there's a whole other half of the discussion, which is, which is what does something, uh, uh, what does something look like? And uh, you stop by our booth today, just as we're talking with Angelica, from Electro Couture, and if I could summon her over here. So we were just talking about how, how uh, technology integration and fashion and textiles and appearance is really a topic beyond the printed electronics community. Can you talk a little bit about the work that your group is doing? Um, yes, absolutely. So at my company, we are actually emerging uh, technology and fashion not only fashion but mainly also textiles so it's all about excuse me <laughs> integrating technology into textiles and garments because um, I think that in the future especially um, everything around us is becoming smart so why not also our clothing especially because we are exposed to so much um, of our clothes which is makes most of our interface so, yeah. <laughs> right. what do you see is the main challenges getting uh, electronics into clothing? The main challenges um, of getting electronics into clothing is definitely that most of the electronics are not made for a wearable use case. So they are not flexible, they are not made for the washing machine. Right. Um, batteries are always a big issue. Batteries are big and bulky. They are not, yeah, not lightweight right. and wearable. So I think those are the biggest obstacles. Right. And who do you think really wants to buy electronic clothing? So do you think it, it's ready for the mass consumer market or do you see niches? And what, what niches do you think would, would go for this first? Well, that's a good question. Who will be the people interested in these kind of things you're asking, yeah. right? So um, I guess there's different industries. As I said, we're not only focusing on fashion, but also textiles. Um, because I mean, textiles, you have them in your interior, in your house, in cars. So all these kind of things can right. become smart in a way. And um, clothing, I think, if you really focus just on clothing, it's yeah, definitely right. the end consumer. So it's great. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about your company and what you do? Um, yeah, at Electro Couture, we are doing innovation in the field of fashion technology. Right. And um, we're actually at the moment mainly doing a lot of consultancies. So we are matchmakers between the fashion and the technology industry. And we are a consulting company who want to enter the fashion tech field. But on the other hand, we're also doing a lot of in-house R&D projects because we want to show and um, yeah, explore what's actually possible in the field of fashion technologies. Okay. So you have, a web, you have a website. What website should people go to to find you? <laughs> yeah, it's electrocouture.com. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Yeah. All right. Let me get the mic from you. All right, excellent. Well, thank you for standing in and impromptu, just visiting thank us. Thank you. And Raghu, thanks again for letting thanks, us Sam. participate. Uh, all, thank and, you. Uh, uh, for the cooperation. This is a great event. And thank we're you. making great contacts, and we'll look forward to being back next year. Excellent. Thanks, Dan.